Welcome to Measuring the Immeasurable. Today we're going to talk about scaling and similarity. But before we get to that, I'd like to tell you what measuring the immeasurable means. We're going to talk about methods for measuring things that you just couldn't practically do without mathematics. For example, how would you measure the height of a distant mountain? You're certainly not going to go and whip a tape measure up on it. Or how would you measure the area of a volcanic lake? or the amount of rock that needs to be removed from a quarry, or even what to measure on an object where every part of it looks the same as you start to zoom in. How do we make measurements on objects like these? How do we measure the immeasurable? Well, it turns out that the toolkit that we would use for these things is a very basic toolkit. It's similarity and scale, and so that's what we want to talk about today. We say that two geometric figures are similar if they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So for example, these three happy faces would be similar. Each one of them is a slightly scaled up version of another one. I notice that the one on the far right, by the way, is rotated 90 degrees. It doesn't matter what direction you're rotated, as long as you could be paired up. On the flip side, the frowny faces are not similar. The middle frowny face is short and fat, whereas the other one is tall and skinny, but neither one of the other two are round like the original one. This description of similarity is kind of intuitive, and a more technical, mathy definition is this one. Two figures are similar if they have corresponding points, and the distance between them is always proportional. What exactly does that mean? Well, let's take a look at our first two happy faces. Both of them have a top of their head and a bottom of their head and so we could measure these distances, which we'll call big A and little a. And we can look at the fraction big A over little a. They also both have smiles. So we could, for example, take the distance from their smiles and call them big B and little b, and look at the ratio of big B to little b. So the idea of them having matching tops and bottoms or smiley faces is the idea of having corresponding points. And the idea of the distance between them being proportional is that if we look at a divided by a and b divided by b, they should be the same thing. This gives us a precise way of explaining why the two frowny faces are not similar. If we measure the same corresponding ratios, we see that a over a is 1. They're the same height. But big B over little b is 2. The second guy's frown is twice as big as the first guy's frown. They're not similar. So you were given a worksheet early on and asked to identify which of these figures were similar. Did you do it? Well, let me show you which ones are similar by color coding them all the same. You notice that all of the circles are similar to each other and all of the squares are similar to each other. But once you start getting into ovals and triangles and rectangles, we have to be a little bit more careful. Not all the triangles on this page were similar and not all of the ovals were and not all of the rectangles were. One of the concepts we use when talking about similar objects is the idea of scale. We sometimes say that similar figures are in scale. Scale refers to a size difference between the two figures. It's a measure of how much larger or smaller one of the figures is when compared to another. For example, if we focus on the bottom two triangles, then the first one is a larger scale version of the second one, or the second one could be considered a smaller scale version of the big one. On the other hand, if we take a look at the two top ones, then they're at the same scale. They're the same size. Let's take a look at another example, a pair of trapezoids. So what does this notion of scale mean on an object like this? Well, we could measure a bunch of their lengths, say the lengths of their tops or their bottoms or their sides. Since these shapes are similar, that means that the ratios of these corresponding sides are always the same. Big A to little a, big B to little b, big C to little c. We don't even have to measure across sides. We could say cut across a diagonal and still look at the ratio of big D to little d, and it would be the same each time. So what is this number we keep getting, this common value for every single ratio? Well, we call that the scaling factor, and that's what we really mean when we say things are in scale. In this case, the scaling factor is about 3 to 2, 3 halves. Every object on the big shape is about 1.5 times larger than an object on the small shape. Once we have the scaling factor, we don't really need all of these observations. We could use the scaling factor to take any length on the small shape 
and scale it up to find the corresponding length on the big shape. For example, suppose we knew that the height of the smaller trapezoid was 6. What would the height of the larger trapezoid be? Well, we could use the scaling factor. We know that the scaling factor is going to be what we get whenever we set up a ratio of corresponding sides. So the unknown side to 6 would be the same as 3 to 2. If we cross multiply, then the unknown side would be 3 halves times 6, which is 9. And so now we know the height of the larger trapezoid using a scaling factor. We can use the scale factor to measure lengths on a large object as long as we have access to a small scale version of it. This is going to be the common theme whenever we want to use this in the real world. The basic idea is we first find the scaling factor by measuring something on the large object and the same thing on the small object. The scaling factor, if you want a formula, is equal to the large scale measurement divided by the small scale measurement. Once we have that scaling factor, we can multiply any other measurement on the small object by it in order to get the corresponding measurement on the large object. So again, in formulas, the scaling factor times a small scale measurement is equal to the corresponding large scale measurement. So let's try this on an example. Say you've got a big old truck, and you also have a little matchbox version of the thing. The toy is only 3 inches long, and it has wheels that measure 7 16 inch in diameter. On the other hand, you pull out your tape measure and find that your truck has 29 inch diameter tires. So based on that, how long is the truck? Well, let's use this idea of small scale measurements and scaling factors. So first we're going to find the scaling factor. That means we need to measure something on both of the models. Well, we had the tire measurement. On the big truck it was 29 inches, and on the small truck it was 7 16 of an inch. And so if we set up the fraction 29 over 7 16 which is 0.4375, we get the scaling factor of about 66.3. Now that we've got the scaling factor, we can multiply by it. We're looking for the length of the truck, so we need to take the length of the small truck as our starting point. The small truck, remember, was 3 inches long, so if we take 66.3 times 3, we'll end up with 199 inches. And so our truck is approximately 200 inches long. Let's take a look at another example. Here's the School of Mines as seen from the air. If you don't quite have your orientation down on campus yet, the big arch is right here. And McClory Hall in the front of the campus is right there. The arrow is pointing at its backside. Speaking of McClory Hall, how long is that McClory building running from east to west? I mean this distance right here. Well, if we pull out a ruler, we could measure it. And on my ruler, this measures to about 43 millimeters. But now we need to find a scaling factor, something in the real world to measure it against. If it's a map, then you already have it. There's the map scale, which is usually found in the corner. The map scale says that this interval that I measure as 15 millimeters is actually 50 feet in the real world. And so now I have a measurement on the small scale object at the map and the corresponding measurement in the large scale object of the real world. So we can set up a scaling factor of 50 feet in the real world divided by 15 millimeters on the map. And that gets me about 3.33. And if you're worried about the units, the units are feet per millimeter. Every millimeter on the map corresponds to three and a third feet in the real world. Now that I've got the scaling factor, I can multiply by the length on the map of the building. So 3.33 times 43 is going to get me 143 feet. And so the McClory building is 143 feet long. Now it's your turn to give this a shot. I'd like you guys to split up into two-person teams and to work on the scaling and proportion worksheet. And please be careful with my atomium model. I got that in Belgium.